is the most dangerous thing in this world. But without control, chaos will kill you. After this summer, there's been a throne shaped hole in people's hearts because of a certain series ending. Right. So I'm wondering, like, what's your take on why this is our next fantasy TV obsession? You know, I think that um, what Game of Thrones did for us is blow open the doors of fantasy to mm -hmm. say that it's not just for um, geeky, nerdy <laughs> genre people, <laughs> um, but to say that actually there's something there for everyone. And that's what I think people are looking for in television right now, mm -hmm. which is perhaps a touch of escapism, a touch of a world that doesn't look like ours, but you also have to be able to relate to the journeys of the characters. And that, to me, is what you really find with Geralt and Ciri and Yennefer, mm -hmm. is they are quote-unquote normal people. I mean, you know, they're, they're <laughs> magicians. And, Give or take and, a few powers. You know, yeah. <laughs> monster hunters. But um, they have the same emotional range that we have. Mm -hmm. They fall in love. They uh, hate each other at times. And I think that that's kind of what people are looking for, is a journey that represents their own life, but <laughs> a couple extra bells and whistles. <laughs> well, I mean, and kind of on that note, what I think the series does really well is balance a number of different I think tones, I mean, you get some scenes that are like very, very funny, and then you get other scenes that are ho absolutely horrifying. Right. <laughs> um, but it's a lot of great action, too. I wondered, uh, where did that come in? Was that something that you were encouraging the writers to bring out? Was that coming straight from the novels? So it's a little bit of both. The novels mm. are hilariously funny, which is one of the first things that really stuck out to me, mm. because that's not something that you see a lot in fantasy television, mm -hmm. right? Fantasy, because it deals with big themes and war and death, it's like, it's a very earnest uh, uh, medium in general. but. The books are really funny. The other thing, though, that I love that you just brought up is the writers themselves. Mm -hmm. So the writers write their episodes. I don't write them. I don't want them to try to sound like me. Mm -hmm. That's not the idea, especially in television that's sort of binge-worthy. Mm -hmm. You don't want every episode to have the exact same tone. It would get really boring over eight hours. So I really pushed the writers to embrace their own episodes and to bring their own voice to them. Mm -hmm. So it's one of my favorite parts of the first season is you have, you know, you can watch an episode and go like, okay, that writer's pretty dark because <laughs> there's a lot of, you know, sort of gritty suspense or horror. Mm -hmm. And then there's episodes that are really funny or more that are epic adventures you know we even have episodes that I would say are slightly romantic in nature mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and to me that's one of the best things that you get in television is you get to run that gamut as long as it all falls under the same umbrella of the show hunting monsters for a price I thought you'd have fangs or horns or something I had them filed down <laughs> Um, back to just the idea of the f fantasy genre, I think it's fair to say that historically it hasn't always been best for the best for its women characters. And right. this show, obviously, right from the get-go, you see it's kind of approaching things differently. Um, I wondered, you know, where, where did that come from? Why is that important to you? And how, I mean, just how is The Witcher kind of different from what's come before it? So what's really great is that comes straight from the books. Mm -hmm. When I first met with um, Andrzej Sapkowski in Poland almost two years ago, I actually said to him, like, I'm surprised. I was mm -hmm. reading the short stories that take place, you know, um, in this fictional world. They were written in the 80s and published in the 80s. Like, I was surprised at how strong and powerful and mm -hmm. independent the women were. And he said something about the fact that I had never met his mother. And <laughs> so I sort of dug into women in Poland in this era. And it turns out that, um, you know, I think as everyone knows, Poland has experienced a ton ton of conflict over mm -hmm. their history as a country. And a lot of the men were killed in that conflict. Um, and women had to move from being the center of the family to being the centers of the community and the workplace. And these are tough ass women. Mm -hmm. um, and they're portrayed that way in the book. The important thing to me, because we, in the books though, you meet them through Geralt's lens. Mm -hmm. So the really, uh, I think, important change that I made was I brought them to the surface really early in the series. And I let us let the audience meet them before they met anyone else. So they're really built from the ground up, as all humans mm -hmm. and women mm -hmm. are. You have your own experiences, you have your own passions, your own desires, your own damage, um, your own vulnerabilities. And I was really interested in seeing where all three characters were thought they were going to go and then how that changed once they intersected. So it's really less, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's, I'm asked a lot if it's a feminist take. I don't know that it is. It's a human take. It is yeah. trying to make sure that all of our characters are given the same strong foundation. And uh, so, of course, we, we talked about your writers a little bit, and you, of course, yourself have been have been writing. You've been in writers' rooms for, for most of your career, and you've been an EP on shows. How are things different this time around as like, the <laughs> showrunner? I moved my way up through the system, um, and it gave me the best possible education. I mean, I think that's what I can sort of lean back on as a showrunner for the first time. I mean, this is not... The Witcher is not a small production. Mm -hmm. I 
I dove in deep the first time. <laughs> but I have this incredible sort of, you know, two decades of experience that really got me on set a lot, working with actors a lot, working with directors. And that's the stuff I lean on. Um, you know, the other thing I think, the big lesson for me is at the beginning I wanted to do everything myself. I thought that was my job. <laughs> right. um, and in fact, it's not <laughs> at all. Um, the best thing that I can do is hire obviously incredible writers who, I mean, these stories are really theirs as much as they are mine. And then trust the team of directors and producers and cast and the, and the crew and let them be the experts at their jobs. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of just make sure that it's all staying in the initial vision that we all set out. What's the one lesson you've got from this doing this first season that you're going to take and apply to? Season two, then. Oh, God. There's so many. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I would say the big thing is really pre-planning. So the very first time that you're doing a television show, mm -hmm. you can only plan so much because it's all brand new. This feels now like we're putting a little bit more of a like comfy slipper back on <laughs> as opposed to yeah. a brand new shoe. So what we really took from it is the the ability to plan ahead. So um, spoiler, all the scripts are written. They're yeah. done. We know what we're shooting. So the great news is, is that we have them all now and we can make the plan. We can stick to the plan. We know what works and what doesn't work. And um, I don't know that making television is ever smooth, but I think there will be a few less bumps this time. No matter what you choose, you'll come out bloody.